24 career wins. Just like that. 19 knockouts. And four world titles across four organizations. Chris Cyborg has been widely regarded as the greatest female fighter mixed martial arts has ever seen. Tonight, the featherweight queen returns to the Bellator MMA cage with her legacy and her belt on the line as she makes another title defense. Her opponent, an Irish brawler from the notoriously tough SBG fight camp, Sinead K.O. Kavanaugh. I'm a whole war nightmare. They think I can't do it when I'm, I'm a shock. In the main event, Ireland's five-time national boxing champion looks to dethrone MMA royalty and etch her name in the sports history books. Should I say she's gonna shock the world? Everyone I fight to say that. It's Cyborg versus Kavanaugh in a battle for Bellator gold. returns to where it all began over a dozen years ago, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. And hey, you gotta love what they've done with the place, adding a guitar-shaped hotel, an engineering masterpiece soaring 450 feet into the Sunshine State sky. Tonight's main event principles have engineered success out of smashing their opponents the way the likes of Pete Townsend, Jimi Hendrix, and Kurt Cobain smashed their guitars. Chris Cyborg and Sinead Kavanaugh are set to tune each other up for the title. Chris Cyborg donning a Miami Dolphins jersey. Dolphins riding high after the upset win over the Ravens. We get another chance to witness a living legend in action. After losing her pro debut in her native Brazil in 2005, Cyborg reeled off an incredible 20 consecutive wins over the next 13 years. 17 courtesy of her devastating power, including 10 in the first round. More than half of her fights have been championships affairs. Hello there, I'm Moro Ranallo alongside Big John McCarthy. And despite her longevity, despite her dominance, it is the way that she responded to just her second setback against Amanda Nunes that has impressed you the most. Why? Everyone's going to get knocked down some point in their life. It's how you get up and what you do with that knowledge because all of those wins you talked about 13 years, 20 wins in a row. You don't learn that much because everything's working for you. And she was just this berserker that went through everybody. But it was that loss that made her change. And she went and said, I need to do things different. I can't get hit the same way. I need to be a smarter fighter. You take a look at what she's done as she's come to Bellator. The fight with Julia Budd picked her apart with body shots, did an outstanding job of just systematically breaking her down. Arlene Blanco got the very first submission of her career against Arlene because she brought in the jujitsu that she's been practicing. Now she's going to face a killer in boxing and she brings guys like Antonio McKee, the trainer, in the wrestling aspect just to get it up to that next level. So what people think is going to happen might not happen as far as staying on the feet. Look, she is a killer and she is getting better at the age of 36. Now she's better than she ever was in the past. And tonight, Cyborg defends the Bellator crown that she won in her promotional debut for the third time against Sinead Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh is a huge underdog and she's had to overcome huge obstacles just to be here. A mom at 17 who struggled to keep a roof over her family's head. When boxing couldn't pay the bills, she made the move to MMA. And now thanks to her efforts, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the sacrifice, she is now the proverbial one punch away from living the dream. And by all accounts, Kavanaugh isn't intimidated by one of the sport's biggest nightmares. Well, that's one of the things that she thinks every other 
woman that has stepped in with Chris has that fear of Chris, and that fear led to them making mistakes in the fight and then allowed Chris to do what she wanted. She basically said the same thing as her countrymen. Look, I'm not coming here to take part. I'm coming here to take over. I'm going to take that belt from Chris Cyborg. I'm going to beat her on the feet. I'm going to put her butt on the canvas, and I'm going to knock her out. We're going to see if she can do it. Cyborg Nation anticipates another cause for celebration, while the island nation of Ireland hopes to fet its first female MMA champion. With more on tonight's main event and the rest of Bellator 271, I say hello and welcome to the pride of the 305, Amanda Guerra holding it down at the fight desk. Moro, I sure appreciate it, and I am very happy to be here along with two-time world champ Josh Thompson. Let's dive in to that main event tonight. Chris Thyberg going up against Sinead Kavanaugh. They talked about Sinead Kavanaugh not being afraid, and we know that. But you pointed out this week, Chris Cyborg, she has the ability to break people. Yeah, see, people talk about it. We're going to find out tonight. Sinead's talked about it all the time. But when she gets in that cage, will it be different? But Chris Cyborg has that ability to do that to every opponent that has stepped in the cage with her. For 13 years, she went undefeated. Julia Budd had waited for the opportunity for years to fight her, then got in there and just folded under pressure. Arlene Blankow was trying to push her back, wasn't able to do that as well. Leslie Smith said the same exact thing that every other female fighter has said. I'm going to make her go backwards. I'm going to walk her down. I'm going to throw big strikes. None of them were able to do it. So I'm going to find out tonight if Sinead Kavanaugh is able to do that. Look, she's talking that right now. She says that she can do it. But let's talk about Sinead Kavanaugh just a little bit more because she told us this week, look, I feel like this particular moment is overdue for me. I should have been here already. If she were to win, what are the keys for her tonight? She's got to do what every other female has tried to do, and that's push her backwards. She's also got to make sure she throws her punches in combinations. She can't afford to just throw ones and twos. She's got to get Cyborg to sit on her back foot to take away some of the power that she possesses. And when Cyborg walks forward, she's got to stick and move and get offline. Try not to stand directly in front of her because Cyborg throws blitzes. What I mean by that is straight punches right down the middle, twos and threes. She just walks you back and tries to push you backwards. Kavanaugh needs to step off, throw big shots, hopefully lands the big shot and follows up with the finish. That is the main event, but this is a stacked card tonight. We have Tyro Fortune going up against Linton Vassell. Vassell telling us this week that he feels better than ever at heavyweight and he wants to finish Fortune in a dominant fashion. And then the one that is everybody talking, Aaron Pico, who is on another level right now. Josh, you know that more than anyone. We're going to talk a lot about it tonight. But he is going up against the guy in Justin Gonzalez who is undefeated. So can all the changes that Aaron Pico has made over the past year or so bring him to a win tonight? We cannot wait to watch it all go down. So let's kick off the big night. Moro, down to you. Thank you very much. We're bookending Bellator 271 with 145 pound action. Number one ranked Arlene Blanco, the former title challenger, takes on the number seven ranked Pam Bam Sorensen, a former Invicta FC champion. And now we welcome to the cage Pam Bam Sorensen. Thirty-five-year-old Pam Bam Sorensen coming off a victory in her Bellator debut, a split decision win over Roberta Samad at Bellator 264 this past August. And we mentioned John Former Invicta FC champion holds some notable wins over Caitlin Young, Jessica Rose Clark, and Nico Montano. And here's a look at that victory over Samad in her Bellator debut. Yeah, it was really her counterattack. She would go in. Big time, straight shots, used the kick right off of her hands many times. It was just her constant pressure that started to break down Samad. Got the win, and now is here to prove that that was not a fluke going up against a very good striker in Arlene Blanco. And Sorensen knows that she's facing the number one ranked contender, wants to take her out in dominant fashion, so she hopefully can throw her name into the title mix. And now her opponent, Arlene Angerfist Blanco. Bringing the thunder from down under, Arlene. 
Evelyn Blanco, indeed capable of dishing out some TNT, the proud Australian who has her ticket booked. She is ready to go home at the break of dawn, regardless of the outcome of tonight's fight. She wants to get back to her kids, and she would love to get back with a huge victory, wants to maintain that number one spot in the rankings. And by stepping into the cage tonight, she is competing in her 12th Bellator women's featherweight bout. That is a record for the division. Well, she's got power in her hands. Look at that big right hand. You can see her in this her last fight, and then she is a finisher. Arlene Blanco has very good footwork, very good hands, and now working at Jackson Wink, her wrestling has really gotten better to the point she might even take try and take down in this fight. Eight of her 14 wins have come via form of knockout. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. Here's the tail of the tape for our opening contest in the featherweight division. This featherweight matchup, 64.5 to 63. Point five. There is not much difference in anything here. This should be what we call a banger's brawl. With the official introductions, here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Bellator MMA Live on Showtime from Hard Rock Live at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The action here at Bellator 271 is set to begin with three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot six, weighing in 146 pounds, her professional record, nine wins, three losses, fighting out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Pam Bam Sorensen. And across the cage, her adversary out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 145.8 pounds as a two-time title challenger. She stands with 14 professional victories, eight defeats from Penrith, Western Sydney, Australia, presenting Arlene Angerfist Blanco. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge, Jason Herzog. Arlene Blanco in the red gloves has the fastest finish in Bellator women's featherweight history. 22 second knockout of Amanda Bell at Bellator 224. Pam Sorensen looking for her third straight win. She's in the blue gloves. They touch gloves and we are underway. Nice clean right hand right away by Arlene Blanco. Landed just flush. And it will be the, the difference I think you're going to see here. Speed of hands by Arlene Blanco. Look at her re reaching out and touching that target. Blanco putting the pressure on Sorensen, landing a series of right hands. Has Sorensen backed up to the fence. You could see the look on Sorensen's face. She was in trouble there. The fact that the clinch occurred was actually very good for Sorensen. Blanco has won seven of her last nine fights. The defeats have come to the only two women to hold featherweight gold in Bellator MMA, Chris Cyborg and Julia Butt. Yeah, and you can look at those fights against Butt. A lot of people thought that Blanco won the one. It was a split decision, but it didn't go her way. But she gives problems to everyone based upon she throws straight punches most of the time. Look at those shots. Pam Sorens is going to have to figure out her range and her distance so she is not ending up on the end of these shots. Oh, beautiful right hand flush on the face of Sorensen. Sorensen looking for the takedown. Defended by Blanco, but Sorensen tenacious. Has Blanco on one knee. Smart move by Sorensen to look for that takedown and get out of this gunslinging battle that she is losing to Arlene Blenko. Get into the clinch, get this fight to the ground, and start to use your ground and pound. Blenko talked about finishing this fight as fast as possible so she could get home to her 20-year-old son, or daughter Kayla's son, Keen, who are 13. Well, this right here is why Arlene Blenko spent the last six months here in the States in Albuquerque working with Jackson Wink is she wanted to have a better wrestling game, better ability to get herself out of the clinch or to control the clinch and not end up on the ground in a position where she was unable to defend herself. 
mentioned, spent time training with the likes of Holly Holm and Clarissa Shields. And she is very high on Aaron Pico, who we will see in action later tonight against the undefeated Justin Gonzalez. Pico has morphed into a completely different fighter since linking up with Jackson Wink MMA. Unbelievable difference in the Aaron Pico that first came out and what we are seeing him do today. They have done a magnificent job. Number six ranked, and hey, Justin Gonzalez, all he's done is go 12 and 0, ranked number eight in the division. He's a fun fighter to watch. Right now, you have to get in this. If Sorensen doesn't change this up, because what she's doing is she's using this position to stall time, to do some dirty boxing, hit the legs, but it's not enough in her attack. She's got to at least try to get this fight to the ground or do something different or Jason Herzog's going to separate. Sorensen told us that she thought her wrestling was a lot better. Unable to take Blanco down and keep her down as fans restless here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Referee Jason Herzog separates them, reset in the center of the cage. You see that backward movement by Sorensen. She is just oh, she got rattled with that left to get that clinch back. And her chin is up when Blanco attacks a minute ten. It's Blanco, the noted boxer, getting the better of the striking exchanges. A minute remaining in the first round. But all Blanco checked that kick. All of that you saw in that clinch, although it didn't look like anything, the one thing it did for Pam Sorensen is it made Arlene Blanco's arms get a little heavy. They're a little slower now because she had to hold on. She had to control and hold weight. It's not going to be the same quickness that you'll see. Three punch combination culminating with a straight left hand bouncing off the forehead of Sorensen. Impressive hand speed and impressive accuracy by anger fist Arlene Blanco. Oh, but Sorensen comes back land to left. Yes. Arlene Blanco's right hand right now cannot miss the target. It has landed consistently. And she's thrown it out. One, two lands again for Blanco. Coming up on the final 10 seconds, continues to pop Sorensen's head back. But again, Sorensen standing ground as we come to the end of round one. Showtime Sports takes an intense look at one of the NBA's aggressive, versatile, and outspoken players discover the lasting effect this Hall of Famer has left on the sport. Anything is possible if you're Kevin Garnett. The Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy. A high school kid? No chance. He saw the future of what basketball was about to become. He does whatever it takes to win a basketball game. All I know is all out. I want to be challenged to the end. Anything possible! I'm taking new flavor today. How do you have it on your unofficial scorecard after the first round, John? Oh, that was a very easy round to score. That's 10-9, Arlene Blenko. She landed the clean shot. She actually hurt Pam Sorensen in that round. Pam Sorensen's greatest position was the clinch, so she wouldn't be getting hit by that right hand. Round two underway here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Pam Sorensen delivering the left body kick. Look at the total strike stats there, Bob, and, and there's just no way that I can believe that you're going to tell me Sorensen has landed at a higher rate than Arlene Pletko right now. Right hand lands for Sorensen, countered by Blenko. That's one of the things that's wrong with when people are watching this. They see, they see the stats like that. 
it doesn't matter how many shots Pam Sorensen landed because they didn't have any power compared to the shots that Arlene Blenko is throwing. Arlene Blenko's shots are hurting Pam Sorensen, just like you saw right there. A minute gone here on the second. Sorensen has tasted enough of the power, looking for the takedown. Well defended by Arlene Blenko. Arlene Blenko needs to get that right under her, bring it up higher so she can turn Pam Sorensen. You see Pam backing her hips to the back side of Arlene. That's to block that. Oh, there's an elbow across the face by Sorensen, creating separation. Misses with that slashing elbow on the break. That was a nice, clean elbow that she did land up against the cage, though. Sorensen up. These shots are going to add up over time. She keeps on eating that right hand. It's having a cumulative effect where she's not, just one of them is not going to be, she's not going to stand up from it. Down to right hand down the middle lands for Blanco. Picking apart Sorensen, commanding the center of the cage, dictating the terms. Busting up against Sorensen's face. Sorensen backing up in a straight line, and she pays for it with that right hand over the top by Blanco. Another right. Sorensen on the retreat. Sorensen changes levels. Desperation attempted a takedown. A little desperation. Arlene's not doing the right. She's looking for a switch right here. But with Sorensen's hands completed, she needs to defend against that takedown. Put that arm in for the switch in case so she can put pressure down on the shoulder. But Sorensen expending energy and trying to secure the takedown. And now it's Blanco pinning Sorensen against the fence. A nice reversal. And again, great takedown defense. And Sterling striking as Blanco. Her fists are angry. And you do not want to make them angry. But Sorensen again. Muting the offense momentarily. But what a great job of changing levels by Pam Sorensen to get herself out of danger and take away what Arlene Blanco was bringing. You know, you can look at it, you can say, I don't like that. It's smart because she's getting blitzed. It's called having a fight IQ, my friend, and she is displaying it, although now Blanco looking for the guillotine. Choke. She has a triangle choke on her resume. Sprawled out here. She could get this, but she needed to use her body. Good job of using it to gain position. And now Blanco again creating separation, unloading on Sorensen. Arlene Blanco's right hand is money tonight. It cannot miss. Chopping right hand over the top by Blanco. Sorensen trying to control Blanco's weapons, being her two arms. You see there's a hematoma on the left eye, above the left eye of Pam Sorensen from those shots. That right hand has just punished. Why, why every time I hear the word hematoma, I'm thinking Mark Hominick or Asim Rahman. <laughs> I wonder why. Coming up on the final 30 seconds of the second round where Pam Sorensen has been able to neutralize Blanco's offense just when it appeared that Blanco was going to continue blasting at will. Blanco putting herself in a position there. Why are you trying for this takedown? There's no reason. Separate and start hitting that right hand again, but... Big round again for Arlene Blanco. <laughs> Take a look at these shots by Blanco. Boom, beautiful right hand, and it happened over and over again during the round. Watch the right hand. That one hits the chest, but she, in inside fighting, outside, that right hand just keeps on landing. And you see Pam Sorensen having such trouble and then dropped to change levels to drive into her. Very smart, intelligent move by Pam, but she's having some problems here. Down the middle when you're 
close. Otherwise, one fight long. Tens and nine. You got it? Tens and nine. Discipline. Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as we go to the third and final. Mike Winkle, John, administering instructions to Anger Fist Arlene Blanco. Some concern in Pam Bam Sorensen's corner, but the game competitor answers the bell for round three. After 10 minutes, your unofficial scorecard reads. I've got Blanco up both rounds, 10-9. Pam Sorensen's gonna have to figure out how to stay away from that right hand and get into Arlene Blanco, get the takedown. I think she needs a finish if she wants to win this fight. Sorensen straight in front of Blanco are coming in at angles and there's a right hand over the top by Sorensen and then Beautiful counter the counter by right hand by Blanco. The 38-year-old Blanco began training boxing at 26. Made a pro debut in July of 2012. Four wins as a pro boxer, two of them via knockout. One minute gone here in the final frame. And our lead needs to go back to that jab. Use the jab to set up the right hand. Keep Pepper in that left hand, put it in the middle of her face. She's gonna have a problem in her response when you throw that big right hand. Blanco continues to stop as that right hand cocked him. Vicious, stiff left. The yeah. jab, that like a power jab from yeah, Blanco. That left caused a problem in Pam Sorensen as far as her seeing. She was blinking a lot, so it obviously had an effect. Right hand, and Sorensen timed the second right again, looking for the takedown. She will have Blanco along the fence. And Talk about the adjustments that need to be made to Sorensen's strategy as we continue to tick tock here in the third and final round. As far as the takedown, it's not easy against the cage. What she's trying to do is get a body lock, and it's against the cage, very difficult. Get, talk, you're talking about not two points of balance with your left and right foot. You're also now talking about a third point of balance with your body, your butt, against the cage. So it's very difficult at this time in MMA to get takedowns from that position. Another jab splits the guard of Sorensen and Sorensen's face beginning to show the effects of this constant barrage from Blanco. Yeah, one of the things you'd like to see from Arlene, since Sorensen is being smart and trying to sit, you know, circle her way away from that power, Arlene needs to start stepping off with her left foot to set up that right hand, just like you're seeing right there. Nice counter right, right down the middle, backing Sorensen up. Beautifully timed counter right hand by Blanco. She's in the range, John. Lands with the jab. Sorensen tries to come over the top with the right hand. Sorensen is, man, you, you talk about a game fighter, someone who is in here just all hard because she's taken some hard shots throughout this fight. Look, she's still here. 35 years of age. In fact, it was her starting cardio kickboxing when she was at one of the lowest points in her life. Her best friend had just passed away. She put on some weight. She wanted to feel better about herself. And, well, taking cardio kickboxing classes has led to the Bellator MMA cage. There's a lot of people that just started off going to one class and started an entire career. Including... The champion in the main event, right. Chris Cyborg, was a professional handball player discovered by Ujamar Fadrigo of the Shooter Box Academy, was offered, hey, come on in for a, a free lesson. A free lesson. <laughs> well, she's been dishing out lessons ever since. Less than a minute remaining in this fight, Chris Cyborg will be defending the Bellator Featherweight Championship against Sinead Kavanaugh. Arlene Blanco was on the receiving end of Cyborg's first submission win as a pro. A rear naked choke victory back in October of last year at Bellator 249. Blanco bounced back with a 
TKO victory at Bellator 262 and hopes to continue her winning ways as she continues to put it on Pam Bam Sorensen. You can't question the heart or the will of Pam Sorensen, but an extra tough night at the office, courtesy of Arlene Blanco. Tough fight for Pam Sorensen. Obviously, I had given the first, second round 10 9 to Arlene Blanco. Same thing with the third. I think you're going to hear 30 27 from all the judges. How has Blanco's striking improved under the auspices of Jackson Wink MMA? Well, it's, not, it's really not the striking that has improved so much, even though, you know, there are things. Wow, what a combination. You look at the accuracy that she was landing with, and the right hand had power, and it just kept hitting that mark all the time. But it's her wrestling, because in these situations against a fighter like Pam Sorensen in the past, Arlene would find herself on the canvas, fighting to try to get herself back to her feet, and it didn't work for her. Now, she's stopping the takedown, and by stopping the takedown, she's able to unleash offense like you're seeing, and just walk, walk through her opponent, walk away, in my opinion, with a beautiful unanimous decision victory. Will the judges concur? We will soon find out as we are just getting started here. Bellator 271 again. Kayla and Keen eagerly await mom's return to Australia. The dynamic duo, Greg Jackson, Mike Winkle, John. The amount of knowledge between those two mega minds. And let's listen here. Always a great thing to see in a sport where you earn your respect the hardest way possible. Yes, you do. Let's go to Michael C. Williams for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Barry Luxenberg, scores the fight 29 to 28. While judges Troy Winkapaw and Chris Lee both see it exactly the same at 30 to 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Arlene Angerfest Blanco. Arlene Blanco bags the unanimous decision win and will be able to return to her native Australia in the morning. A winner. Picking up her eighth victory here in Bellator, improving to 15 and eight overall, maintaining her hold on the number one ranking. Maybe the third time, if it comes, will be the charm for this hard hitting featherweight who has had two opportunities against the only two women to hold the title, Julia Budd and Chris Cyborg, but winning tonight over a game, Pam Bam Sorensen. All right, let's go to the fight desk. And here's Amanda Guetta. Moro, thank you so much. Well, if you guys at home have not had your fight fix yet, keep it right here on Showtime. Tomorrow night, undefeated, David Benavidez returns to his hometown of Phoenix, Arizona to meet Chiron. Shut it down, Davis in a super middleweight matchup that is at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Saturday, the 27th, two undefeated super bantamweight world champs, Brandon Figueroa and Stephen Fulton Jr. They are going to go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to unify the 122-pound belt on Showtime Championship Boxing. And Friday, December 3rd, champions collide. 135-pound champion Sergio Pettis. He is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a man all too familiar with his belt, former Bellator Bantamweight champ, Kyoji Horiguchi. That is Friday, December 3rd, 10, 9 Central. And that very Sunday, Showtime pay-per-view welcomes back the tank, Gervonta Davis, who puts his WBA lightweight title on the line against hard-hitting Isaac Pitbull Cruz. That is Sunday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on Showtime pay-per-view.
But guys, still to come, we have the main event tonight. Current featherweight champ Chris Cyborg putting her title on the line yet again against Sinead Kavanaugh. As you see them there, Chris Cyborg telling us this week, I'm going to find a way to end this fight in easily. But Sinead Kavanaugh saying, I am not afraid of you, Chris Cyborg, and I have the power shots. Chris Cyborg taking a look at her 13 and 1 at title resume. But you know tonight that Sinead Kavanaugh would like to turn that one into a two. Chris Cyborg, however, however, tonight ends a legend in the world of MMA. But as her career evolves, she is finding what is most important to her is the work she does outside the cage. Chris Cyborg successfully defends the Bellator Featherweight Championship with her 19th knockout. I think if my opponents get intimidated uh, when they face me off me or go inside the cage, I think because of my style of fight. Hey! Right, ladies, good fight. The other the fight is more violent. But I don't think about this. When I face off, no, it, it's me, it's me, you know? Some people see me in the street and say, Chris, you're really nice. I say, how do you think I am? Cyborg's power seems to be taking over. I like it even when I'm fighting. I love my job, and sign the work with Bellator now, I love more, I have a fire in my heart more. I like to use my sport, show faith for all my fans, you know, the no quit the dreams, work harder, and help my family, help the community, and be a good example for everyone. Not just be the world champion, but be the champion of people's hearts. This is the most important for me. We put the 2017, the water well here. And then I'll drink that water. The people need help here, I do the same thing in Brazil. And I feel like God put me in this position for be a fighter, for fight who cannot fight. But for this, it's very bad that they have to fight for themselves here. My motivation, my faith, second and it's all my fans, like you guys. I will support me, no, never quit. I will continue giving you courage for you guys pass through any difficulty in your life. And to be an example to everyone. The Pink Bell Fitness, I have camp only for girls. I invite Leslie for teaching for the girls here. Teach a little bit about mixed martial arts for them, like self-defense, or you want to train for lose weight message you, you cannot quit. You always have to believe in your dream. But everything you put your mind and want to do and you work hard, you're gonna be blessed, you're gonna have. I can hold the 100 titles, but these titles are gonna stay for me forever. But I know in the heart the people will. Well, first and foremost, the work that she is doing is absolutely incredible. But Josh, watching that, Chris Cyborg, 36 years old, by no means is she done because she is amazing. But do you think this helps her mentally as she moves throughout her career? Yeah, absolutely. There comes a time in your career where you start looking ahead. And you're not saying that you're checked out. You don't have one foot out the door. She's still extremely dedicated to the sport and what her, what her goals are. But she's also looking ahead. And that's also very good because mentally that helps her prepare for what's next after fighting. But right now she's focused on tonight. Let's talk about the fight we have coming up here. Aaron, or excuse me, uh, Aaron Pico going up against Justin Gonzalez. And we've been talking about this fight all week because it's going to be great. Look, you know Aaron Pico very well. You've known him for about 10 years now. He switched camps. And ever since then, he has been on another level. Yeah, everything that happened pre him going to Jackson Wink, I think was... It should be just wiped off. And I know we can't do that, and I'd love to do that for him. But I'm telling you right now, he is a completely different fighter. He's the fighter that we talked about him being all these years, all the lead up from the time he signed with Bellator. Okay, his four fight win streak, and he's ran on since he went to Jackson Winks, and the progressions that I have seen from him. Okay, when he knocked out Kerry, he was a little bit of the old Pico. But then when he fought Hatley, he had the takedowns, the ground and pound, the transitions to the submissions. He looked wonderful. But then when he fought John De Jesus, he just was at a different level. The striking, the wrestling, the combinations, the ground and pound was there. But let's not forget about his last fight with Aiden Lee. Aiden Lee was giving him fits. Not in terms of 
making him like making him look bad, but he was giving him fits and making him work for all the positions he normally dominates. And that that's a lot for a young fighter to handle. And he handled it perfectly. Transitions for anacondas, transition on the ground and pound, takedowns, all of those things finally came together. And he is now becoming the fighter that I've always known that he could be. And I think everybody else has known that as well. And he has that confidence when you talk to him. Now, Justin Gonzalez also has a lot of confidence. I mean, he is coming into this 12-0 undefeated there. Now, his technique when it comes to Pico, they're pretty similar though so how does he approach this fight he's got to catch Aaron Pico in transition although Aaron Pico has got 11 fights Justin Gonzalez is 12 and 0 but what he also has got to do is he's got the experience of being a true mixed martial artist Aaron Pico didn't start to become a full MMA fighter till four fights ago Justin Gonzalez has been a true MMA fighter from the beginning. He is someone that works through the transitions. He throws the combinations, he bullies you around, gets you to go backwards, and then he utilizes his wrestling to press you to the fence. Against Taiwan Claxton, who's a great wrestler, but he was able to take Taiwan down, he was able to mix it up, and utilizing his striking with his wrestling was key. And that's what he's gotta do with Aaron Pico. He's gotta keep Aaron Pico guessing. The only way for him, I believe, to beat Aaron Pico is to catch him in transition, whether it's a guillotine, whether it's a submission, whether it's a punch. He's got to catch him in transition because I think Aaron Pico is really good all the way around. So is J-Train. Okay, but he's going to have to do it in transition if he wants to get the win. Look, since this fight was announced, we cannot wait to watch it, and we're about to. Morrow, back down to you. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. Yeah, mouth-watering matchup at 145. The number six ranked Aaron Pico about to go mano a mano against the number eight ranked and undefeated Justin J-Train Gonzalez. Set to now make his way to the cage. Justin J. Trey Gonzalez. Well, J. Train taking a trip on the crazy train, and uh, he doesn't want to get crazy when it comes to believing his own hype, but he is definitely confident, and you would be too. 12 and 0, including a win here in Bellator, a split decision win over Taiwan Claxton at Bellator 260 in June. What do you like most about what Gonzalez brings to the cage? I love the pace that he brings to the cage and the pressure that he brings. And he's the one usually deciding how the fight's going to be fought. He decides if it's going to be the stand-up or if you're going to hit the ground based upon his wrestling. He is a slick fighter, but he is what we call a just junkyard dog mentality fighter. He will not quit. Gonzalez says he believes he can catch Pico in the first or second round and put him to sleep. And now making his way, Aaron Pico. Doesn't get better than the godfather of soul, James Brown, and super bad. And lately, Aaron Pico has been a super bad man, making the walk to the Bellator MMA cage for the first time as a father. His significant other, Kylie, giving birth to Valentino, boy, born July 31st of this year. Not that Pico needed any more motivation, John. No, but he's growing up. And this so much. And Josh brought it up. So much was expected of Aaron, and it was it was you know un unattainable because he wasn't an MMA fighter. He was a great wrestler, and he was a guy that had good hands in the stand-up. I can tell you, Freddie Roach told me at one time, look, if he, he's a boxer, he would be a world champion. But he didn't know how to fight the game of MMA, and he didn't understand the mentality of a true fighter. Now he does. Training with Jackson Wink. Greg Jackson has been a mentor and has been phenomenal with Aaron Pico, and it is all coming to fruition. One of his horses is named Canelo. 
He loves to deliver the left hook, just like Canelo, who became the first ever undisputed super middleweight boxing champion last Saturday. You can see it for yourself on Showtime tomorrow night, and now you can see the numbers for the tail of the tape for this highly anticipated featherweight fight. Well, you're right. It's eight and three, and that last three with Aaron Pico all wins, and he has been dominating at 12 and 0 for the J train, Justin Gonzalez. I think this could be fight of the night. Here's Michael C. Williams. Here in Hollywood, Florida, Bellator MMA moves now to a featherweight feature set. For three five-minute rounds live on Showtime, we introduce the Blue Corner. At 5'9", weighing in 145.6 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. 12 wins, no losses. Fighting out of Greeley, Colorado, Justin J. Gonzalez. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner. At 5'8", weighing in 145.4 pounds. His professional record, eight victories, three defeats. From Whittier, California, he fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Introducing Aaron Pico. And John, the referee, Andrew Glenn. In 11 pro fights, Aaron Pico in the red gloves has never been to the judges' scorecards. Justin Gonzalez at 12 and 0 has never been defeated. He's in the blue gloves, the bell in round one, and immediately Gonzalez over the top and nailing Pico with a right hand, and Pico's chin has been checked in the past. Well, it has, but that, that attack that you saw with that guy's nice timing, an explosive there is takedown attempt by Pico. This is the difference. Everyone thinks because they've been wrestling almost their entire life, like Justin, they think, ah, I don't have a problem with his wrestling. Aaron Pico's wrestling is different. It's dynamic, and he is so good and heavy in the top position. He talked about taking Gonzalez down, and if he gets him down, if the guy gets up, he's doing something special. He has two submission wins, including in his last fight via Anaconda Choke, looking for the choke early in round number one. He started wrestling at the age of four, a savant not only in wrestling, but in boxing, which he started at nine. You can understand why there was so much hype behind Aaron Pico, and he's starting to finally realize his full potential. Justin Gonzalez isn't going to make it easy for him. Here comes your second takedown. Beautiful, wow. beautiful maneuver by Aaron Pico. Ran through him. Justin Gonzalez on his back again now, but got up the first time. Let's see what kind of pressure and attack Aaron Pico can bring. He's trying to slice his knee inside. But the wrist control of Gonzalez right now is giving him a little bit of trouble. Gonzalez has one submission win over here. Nick Choke in his second pro fight now, fighting off his back. Aaron Pico gets his leg taken out from under him, and Gonzalez back up to his feet, but Pico about to uncoil strike like a cobra looking for the takedown again a knee delivered by gonzalez who was off balance well pico was able to deliver a right hand when gonzalez was on the ground that left a little of a lasting impression on gonzalez pico allowed him to get up oh beautiful front kick by Aaron pico there and that was a beautiful left kick high and used that kick to try to go for the single leg and half. gonzalez turning the tables now has pico against the fence momentarily now pico Turning around and they go to the center of the cage and on the exit the sweeping right hand by Gonzalez But it's Pico left hook to the body Pico has landed numerous shots here, but his chin is over oh, the point. He needs to be careful and Gonzalez did land the right hand midway point of what has been an action-packed opening round jab low kick by Gonzalez oh, and Pico just missing with the right uppercut but landed that short left to the body seeing right now Justin Gonzalez the pressure of Aaron Pico is starting to have an effect you see his mouth is open this has been a very fast high-paced fight right now with a lot of techniques being thrown and a lot of energy being burned and speaking of high pace Pico's cardio next level 
Yeah, that's the one thing about Aaron Pico, and everyone will talk about he just simply does not get tired. But then again, he's never been forced to go the distance in any of his fights. Justin Gonzalez getting into a half guard. That was a good job by Justin in, in trapping the leg. But Aaron Pico in this position, we saw as he was fighting Aiden Lee, really went after a lot of submissions. Let's see what he does with Justin Gonzalez. Pico has only been to the third round once, longest fight, 11 minutes, 33 seconds. The opening five minutes have been pretty good for the 25-year-old looking for his fifth consecutive win. Pico bringing heavy heat on that ground and pound. That was a big shot again. Nice job by Gonzalez working his way to his knees so he can get up. Pico going for an anaconda there for a moment. Let go of it. Big, deep breaths. Here's the water. Drink it when you want. Good breath. Let's get those air back. Oh, wow, you're in great shape. Okay, listen, Aaron. Now, don't get cocky in there, right? Don't get... Move your head, move your feet. Put it together, you're doing fine. No spinning kicks, none of that stuff. Stay smart, stay fast. They call him Yoda for a reason, Greg Jackson. Always full of wisdom. Look at the right hand, look at the left to the body. Just a little bit off target, but he does land one later on that was clean. That one right there, and you can see the reaction. You see him bite down on that up kick. Toes just caught the side of the face a little bit, but the takedowns multiple times. Every time he really decided he wanted to put Justin Gonzalez on the canvas, he made it happen. We saw everything in those replays. Everything you need to be a mixed martial artist at the highest level in Aaron Pico, continuing his maturation process. Right. Losing right. his professional debut, his heavily hyped professional debut at Madison Square Garden, no less. Than Having already tasted defeat three times and yet continues to put it all together and has never looked better since being at Jackson Wink MMA looking for the takedown. Single leg looking to run the pipe and drives Gonzalez to the ground. Nice job of calling that takedown as far as running the pipe. This is what makes Aaron Pico so dangerous. At any time, he can put you in a position on the mat. His wrestling is that good. Let's see what he can do from this position because you see that Justin is starting. Arms are in a good place now. He was in a position to start almost look for the keeping. You don't want to do that for the position he was at. Aaron Pico bringing that leg up as he tries to trap the arm, go to a crucifix position from here. Gonzalez started wrestling at eight, wrestled for the University of Northern Colorado in CSU Pueblo, and Val bucking his hips, and Pico in north-south now front headlock, front head and arm on Gonzalez. Yeah, he can put a lot of pressure, but he should jerk him down and come around. Thanks on cue, BJM, and one hook in for Aaron Pico. That was a nice snap down by Aaron, even though it's not from the standing position. You get that momentum going forward and come around it. Gonzalez controlling Pico's left wrist. A minute and a half gone in the middle frame. Pico putting heavy pressure on Gonzalez. Gonzalez holding on to that left wrist to scramble me. Yes, come up that 
materialize. There is a scramble position, but right now Justin's holding on to something that there's nothing there for him other than he's keeping Pico in place and Pico's not doing damage to him. <laughs> Pico, good move by Justin. He open it up where he can. He's got Gonzalez back, Gonzalez back up to a vertical base. Less than three minutes now remaining in the second round. Pico needs to be very careful where his head's at as far as the elbow. Yeah, watch up. that back elbow. And there it goes. Just past the midway point of the round and the fight. Pico in position on oh, loads the left hand to Gonzalez's face. Gonzalez finally lets go of the wrist. Trying to walk down Pico. Pico with the high guard flashes the jab. Good counter by Gonzalez to the body. Look at Justin Gonzalez is not winning this fight right now, but he's hanging in the fight. And he's looking for that moment where he can start to take it over. And your featherweight king is A.J. McKee, who won the $1 million Grand Prix and usurped Patricio Pitbull. There's a left hook to the body, but the takedown secured by Pico. Pico, if you get rid of that, like, could have gone to a Von Fleur. Obviously, for the half guard, you're not going to use it near as much. Pico's in a good position with his heart, arms where they're at. Okay. He's gonna go to a shoulder pressure here, moves himself to the side control. He passes through wow. the guard very well. Very well. Immediately into side control, and Aaron Pico will continue to implement. That was a heavy elbow. Yeah, real short, short, short heavy, compact elbow across the face of Gonzalez. Gonzalez has done a very good job of wrist control throughout the fight, but he's unable to get that control right now. What he's trying to do is bring the posture of yes. Aaron down so he can't land these, but he's unable to at this point. Final 45 seconds of the second round. Gonzalez giving up his back. Pico puts in one hook. There's only one hook right there. At the time, he'd like to get that now. He's got the second hook in. And Pico does have a rear naked choke of victory over Solo Hatley at Bellator 242 in July of last year, looking to hand Justin Gonzalez his first loss in 13 pro fights. Beautiful into full mount, but unfortunately only five seconds left if you're a member of the Pico Posse, but a great round for Aaron Pico. All right. So listen, Eric, he's going to come out this round desperate, right? He's going to really try to push you away. Okay, so you got to move your head, move your feet, keep your eyes open. Fake before you go in, same thing. Hey, seven row, keep going up. Stay sharp on the tongue and hurt. Keep looking off on the Keep looking at hit and go, too. Let's draw the counter, move out of him, and tag him with the tongue and hurt. Once you get him down, relentless again, okay? Deep press. One more. And there is Bellator featherweight champion A.J. McKee in the house. What an ascent it has been for this second generation fighter. You are looking at the future of fighting in both in the Yeah, I was going to say. And sitting there on the outside. Which one? And of course, Pico and A.J. McKee used to train together. And Pico lighting up Gonzalez. And that left hand found a mark on the chin. Justin Gonzalez came out with that low calf kick, and I, I would have really liked to have seen him start that technique earlier in the fight if he was able to. Now, that's easy for me to say, but that technique could have a lot of effect on someone like Aaron Pico as far as the takedowns. Some, he's got some
some whiskers on that chin, man. Left hook to the body, left kick to the body by Aaron Pico. Straight jab lands for Pico, and he avoids that lunging right by Gonzalez. Just misses with the right uppercut. Misses with that head kick. It's an offensive onslaught by Pico John. Well, not giving Gonzalez a chance to breathe, a chance to and they get off. You just said the right word, Marley. Not giving him a chance to breathe because look at Justin Gonzalez is in great shape and he's taken a lot of big shots. And, and he's, he's just against someone that does not have a gas tank limiter in any fashion. This kid can just go and go and go. And you listen to it. His coach said it's time to pass again. Look where the knee comes. He's starting to slice that foot out. The leg's going to come out through that guard. Nice job. Let's see if he gets to mount. No, it comes to side control. And it's officially the longest amount of time that Aaron Pico has inside the Bellator MMA cage in one fight and again it's it's about the evolution it's about growth it's about maturation gaining experience and he faces a tough out in the undefeated Justin Gonzalez again you're looking at the number six ranked Pico the number eight ranked Gonzalez yeah you're talking about a guy that's you know coming into this fight Justin Gonzalez ton of confidence never been beaten he believes in himself and he's not just gonna give this up this is the kind of fight that you need to have for both guys. For Aaron Pico, you need it against a guy that will never quit, never give up. And if it goes to a judge's decision, that's gonna happen. If you're Justin Gonzalez, you gotta have these fights against these supreme athletes that you learn how to slow things down and what techniques you can use to take away what they do. Aaron Pico displaying his growth both technically, physically, mentally. The, the fight IQ continues to grow by leaps and bounds. The, the patience, the composure. Again, just a 25-year-old in his 12th professional fight. Yeah, well, you, you go back to the first round more and the spinning. Well, you pay Greg you Jackson that. put a stop to well, that. Well, okay, and there's the fight IQ, and that's, I'm gonna try this, and it's like, that's not a smart movement at this time. You wanna try that in the third round when your opponent's real tired? Okay, maybe. But that's what Aaron Pico is. Look Another guard pass yeah. by Aaron Pico, and for Justin Gonzalez, he has to scramble, and he's forced to give up his back, and Pico wrenching him back down to the ground, back on top position. Yeah, right now, Aaron Pico is absolutely mauling Justin Gonzalez. Anything he wants to do, basically, and Justin Gonzalez is good. He is defending well. He's being smart. It's just that Aaron Pico is on a different level right now. Final 60 seconds of what has been a comprehensive effort by Aaron Pico. And Justin Gonzalez came in undefeated with plenty of confidence, and we talked about it, finding it difficult to breathe, finding it difficult to relieve the pressure of the cardio machine, Aaron Pico. And you can go from relentless to reckless. We're not seeing that from Pico. Desperation shot by Gonzalez in the final 30 seconds. by Justin Gonzalez, who was 12-0, and 0. coming in. Let's listen in. Two hungry warriors in the featherweight division, and you're looking at the middle of the division. This is the kind of talent on display as Aaron Pico, the proud new papa.
Take a look at some of the techniques. Body shot, look, that is a clean, hard body shot by Aaron Pico. Here comes the kick straight up the middle. Just a little bit to the side. Combination of shots, left hand, right hand. Back to the left to the trying to get to the body. Searching with the left to hit, land the right. Just beautiful work by Aaron Pico throughout. Watch this elbow, that is hard. That is a stunning blow again. Mack and Gonzalez take a shot. Justin Gonzalez is an animal. This guy took so many shots and just walked through them all, just kept coming to get more. Landing, trying to land. It was left try, yeah. hook of his own, but that leads Bruce. to the takedown. And how many takedowns did Aaron Pico have in this fight? Seven of nine, according to our stats. That's pretty impressive. Putting the mixed in mixed martial arts, showcasing all of his superlative skills and going to the judges' scorecards for the first time in his career. Let's get the official decision from Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go now to your three judges at cage side. Judges Eric Colon, Todd Anderson, both scored exactly the same, 30-27, while Judge Troy Winkapaw scores it 30-26. to 26. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Eric. And the Pico Express continues rolling five straight wins for the 25-year-old, improving to nine and three here in Bellator MMA. And Justin Gonzalez tastes defeat for the first time, falling to one and one in his Bellator tenure, but tough competitor now, 12 and one. Let's go to BJM. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Aaron Pico. Aaron, that was a tough, just back and forth brawl. You were doing the most damage. It was definitely your fight, but he kept fighting through things. He land, You landed a, a body shot, a left hook to his body that you could see hurt him. Yeah. About five seconds later, he was trying to take your head off again. No, I knew going into the fight that he was gonna be a strong guy. He's a former wrestler. And one thing, us, one thing about us wrestlers is that we don't quit. I knew that was the case. All my coaches knew that he was gonna be tough. And he was just holding on to me really strong. And if anybody's grappled, if people are holding on to you, it's kind of hard to get strikes off. But you know what? Thank God I walk out here relatively healthy. Uh, he and him healthy as well. I'm just happy I got my full paycheck. And uh, I went three rounds. It's my first time ever going to a decision. I needed the experience. and. Uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy I got the W. I take, take home my full paycheck. <laughs> that is the first time that you went to a judge's decision. At the end of the fight, did you have any trepidation? Were you worried in any fashion as far as uh, they might go the other way? No, I knew I was a dominant performance, but I got to get better. I, I think I'm just so hard on myself. I knew I got the decision, but I want to finish, guys. I want a hard ground and pound. And uh, But I'm happy I got the performance. I got the win. and. Um, Let's go back to the drawing board, because once I step out of this cage, I know it's gonna be a whole different ball game. I gotta get prepared for the next opponent. So let's, let's get to work. Well, I wanna tell you, that was a fantastic performance. Congratulations on a big win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Aaron Pico. Superlative effort by Aaron Pico, improving to nine and three. He told us he wants to rematch everyone that's beaten him. Zach Freeman, Henry Corrales, and Adam Boric. If you look at the featherweight rankings, Pico at number six, Adam Boric is at number three. Let's go back to Amanda and Josh at the fight desk. Josh, I, lo I loved this fight from Aaron Pico because it showcased everything he said he's been working on, which is patience, trust the process of the fight, and you're gonna come out with a victory. What did you see from him? Exactly what you just saw. Exactly what you just talked about, and that's exactly what he needed. He also needed to go the distance. We had this conversation with John in, in the cage. This was a learning process. Him never going the distance is something you need to get out of the way before you can start moving on to those top five and those top 
top three and then get into that title talk. And that's what happened tonight. Justin Gonzalez is a stud. 12-0, it was a beautiful performance by Aaron Pico, but Justin Gonzalez was in that fight all the way to the end, even though the score didn't reflect that. It was a wonderful fight. It was a great fight. We're gonna talk about the next one in just a second, but first, mark it on your calendar, folks. Friday, December 3rd, we have the champions collide when former Bellator Bantamweight champ, Kyoji Horiguchi, he returns to try to take back what he relinquished. He won the Bantamweight title over Darian Caldwell back at Bellator 222. But then he had a knee injury. He knew he was going to be out for some time. He vacated that title. Well, it now belongs to Sergio Pettis. And Horiguchi is back to try and take back what he feels is his. What can we expect? Well, he's the promoter's dream. What he did was he relinquished the title, didn't hold up the division. And then he gave, he talked to Scott Coker, said, when I come back and I'm ready, I want that automatic title shot. And that's where he's at right now. And I'm telling you guys right now, he poses the threat against Pettis that everyone wishes that he would be bring to Pettis. All he's got to do is wrestle, use the speed of his hands, get the transitions on the takedowns. His submission game and his ground and pound is nasty. With Darian Caldwell, he was, able to get, he was able to get takedowns, able to land the striking, stop takedowns. He did a lot of everything he's going to need to do against, against, or against Pettis. With Pettis, though, what he's got to do is keep this fight on the feet the same way he fought Juan Archuleta to win the title. He's got to throw quick combinations, keep himself offline, make sure he never stands directly in front of him, and just touch him. Don't throw anything super hard and overcommit, because if he does that, he will get taken down. And being unstuck on bottom with Horiguchi is not, not something many people was, are able to do. He's, they won't survive, and that's the thing. Pettis needs to make sure he gets back to his feet. Friday, December 3rd, you and I will be there. Cannot wait for that, but we have so much more coming up tonight. We got a heavyweight battle on our hands. Tyrell Fortune going up against Litton Vassell. Let's start with Tyrell Fortune here, who said, look, I've learned my wrestling. I thought it was a striker. I can strike. I'm better at wrestling, and that's what he's got to stick to. Yeah, I'm going to continue to say this all night long because we've been saying it to Tyrell Fortune for the last three or four fights. I said, hey, just start wrestling. You use your wrestling because you, not a lot of heavyweights have top-level wrestling. His pedigree in wrestling is what will get him to the, to the title shot, I believe. As long as he continues to utilize it, to also throw, to use his striking off of those wrestling. You saw with Matt Mitchell, he set up the striking, he threw the shots, and then went right into the takedown, got to the top position. Matt Mitchell was never in a position to defend any of these strikes. He just went off to his back, trying to turn it into belly. Once Tyrell Fortune gets behind him and gets heavy hips on him, he's landing some nasty strikes, and it was the fight was over. That's the type of fight he needs to fight for every heavyweight he fights, because on their back, they're like turtles. A lot of them are. They can't wrestle with him. All right, let's talk about Linton Vassell here. Uh, by the way, for you at home, he is now Big Swarm Vassell because he has moved up to heavyweight. He's been there for a minute, but he decided to change the name now. So Big Swarm Vassell, he loves fighting at this weight. What are the keys for him tonight? Some big changes going on around here. Big, big energy, if you will. Big energy. Um, look, he needs to stay long. And when I talk about the technique of what he needs to do, he needs to make sure that he's all the way in or all the way out. If he's all the way in, he needs to make sure that he's getting that takedown or trying for that takedown as soon as possible or pressing Tyrell to the fence and making a dirty boxing type fight. What he is is physically strong. I have no idea how he ever made light heavyweight. And when you watch some of his light heavyweight fights, he struggled in the second and third round. That conditioning is no longer a factor now that he doesn't have to cut those, those extra pounds. Him on top is nasty. And Tyrell Fortune said the same thing when Lynn Vassell brought him in to fight Ryan Bader. He brought Tyrell Fortune in. He said, look, he is physically strong. Him on top, I don't want to be there. I want to make sure that I'm the one on top of Lynn Vassell. Lynn Vassell, all he has to do is just fight a long distance range fight on the feet. If he is inside, press Tyrell Fortune to the, to the fence and dirty box him and potentially try to get the takedown so he can be on top. If he does that, he'll have a successful tonight. Well, we know Linton Vassell feels good at heavyweight, but we talked to Tyrell Fortune, who also says, look, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. Well, now it's time to see how it all plays out. Mora, we're going to send it back down to you. All right, thank you very much. And here in the FLA, the heavyweights are about to throw down the number five ranked Tyrell Fortune squaring off with the number six ranked Linton Vassell. Tyrell Fortune! Crowded. Oh, yeah, looking to finish it right here, right now. Big hammer, big 
miss by Fortune. His fortunes continue to rise in Bellator. Now turning it on, looking to finish. And it is all over. Tyrone Fortune. Victim, the swan. That's a big man in mount. This is a horrible place to be. He got it. And Luton Michelle scores the huge win. On his way now to the cage, Big Swarm, Linton Vessel. Now known as the Big Swarm, Linton Vassell hoping to make a big moves at heavyweight. He's won his last two fights. And he feels at heavyweight, John, he's faster, he's stronger, just everything. He, he says heavyweights don't really move like light heavyweights on the ground, and he feels he is going to be able to move that quickly on the ground against a guy who, well, has a pretty good background in wrestling in Tyrell Fortune. A really good background in wrestling. In fact, he came and helped with Vassell with his wrestling, but Lynn Vassell was a guy that was cutting down to light heavyweight, but he was losing too much weight and it was affecting his performance. He's really not that much bigger. Now, he just, this is his weight. He doesn't have to lose anything. He's super strong. He feels better in fighting, and that's what you want to do going into the fight. Half of his 20 wins have come in the first round Linton Vassell looking to keep his career moving in the right direction in the biggest weight class and now to make his way Tyrell Fortune <laughs> Tyrell Fortune, his entire pro career has been under the Bellator MMA banner. He is 11 and 1. He has won three straight fights. He had to win it for the love of money, but in order to make the money in MMA, you've got to continue to evolve, continue to improve. And here he is in his 13th professional fight. Ranked number five in the Bellator rankings. Well, look, at we, we've all known about Tyrell as far as his ability to wrestle and how good he is, but he's, he's the typical wrestler. He fell in love with the power <laughs> of the hands and being able to get the knockout. It's so much easier, it's so nice, and it's not the grind that wrestling is, but he's gotta go back to his roots, go back to wrestling, and that the wins will just start piling up. He was the NCAA Division II National Champion in 20. 13 at Grand Canyon University, hoping to one day buy for heavyweight gold here in Bellator MMA. The heavyweights are ready to go toe to toe. Let's go to the tail of the tape for our co feature at Bellator 271. Take a look at that. 253.8 is actually the heaviest that Tyrell Fortune has ever been at the heavyweight division. And Lynn Vassell at 239 is actually at his lightest. We'll see if that makes a difference. Here's Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA now presents live on Showtime tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing first the blue corner at six foot four, weighing in 239.2 pounds. The former light heavyweight title challenger brings 21 professional victories, eight defeats from Milton Kings, England. Big Swarm, Linton Russell. And across the cage is adversary, fighting out of the red corner. At six foot two, weighing in 253.8 pounds. As the professional, he's nearly perfect at 11 and one by way of Portland, Oregon. He fights out of Tempe, Arizona, Tyrell Fortune. And referee in charge, Mike Beltran.
Tyrell Fortune's eighth stoppage victories, the most in Bellator heavyweight history. He's in the red gloves. Linton Vassell right, seeking his 10th win Red in the Bellator Red MMA Red cage. Red the blue gloves, the big boys about to battle. Bell round one. Fortune training out of Arizona Combat Sports with Trevor Lolly, Vassell, Sanford MMA, under noted striking coach Henry Hooft. And like you mentioned, John, they have trained together in the past, but this is about business. Well, training together, look, Sanford MMA has an incredible wrestling coach in Greg Jones, but he's not the size of a guy that can just work with him. They need to bring in a big body, they bring in Tyrell, that makes sense. left hook by Tyrell. Really like that Clinton is keeping the center of the cage. He's the one that's pressing the back of Tyrell Fortune up against that fence. Very smart because if he can get his back to him, and it was uh, Fortune missing with the left hook but scored with the right hand. And there Vassell closing the gap and looking to try to take down Tyrell Fortune. There was a definite clash of heads right there when they came together. Knee up the middle by Vassell. They're jockeying for position. And a lot of energy. This is the, the gritty battle embracing the grind as the wizard employed by Fortune helping him stay on his feet. Good call there, boy. Absolutely, that wizard was important. But look at what happens. And this is what you try to tell people. It doesn't matter in the end if someone knows how to wrestle and they didn't have that pedigree. Lynn Vassell can get someone like Tyrell Fortune down in an MMA contest. And I'm telling you, in the top position, Linton Vassell is a savage. Super strong, great base, and he does great work. Tyrell needs to be very careful of where that arm's at because Linton is outstanding at getting an arm triangle. Steve Mowry, one of Vassell's main training partners, he was impressive on the prelim portion of Bellator 271, but Vassell with eight knockouts, eight submissions, and now in top, on top of Tyrell Fortune from the back and ground and pound from the back. Fortune trying to wing block. Some of those shots getting through. Great job. And now to lace that arm. Take how, look how he's using his right arm to control the right arm of Tyrell Fortune. Five of Vassell's eight submission wins have come via rear naked choke. Again, he's pulling that arm out of position to keep Tyrell from having the ability to use that arm as a base to get himself back up. If he can pull that back again, it's only going to work to benefit him in staying where he's at. See how he's taking both arms, pulling that arm back. That way he can keep pressure down on Tyrell Fortune, making it to where he now get into a mount position. Vassell riding Fortune here, a minute 45 left in the first, and Vassell trying to move himself to where he can get those hooks in, flattening out Fortune. He's almost got that hook in, now he's got a crossbody. If he can just lace his leg through there, he can get a nice squeeze. Always about position before submission, but you're right, putting the squeeze and delivering the ground and bound from the back, Linton Vassell. I'm not saying Tyrell's hurt, but those are hurting as far as every time his head's getting rattled, he's just slowing down in his movements. This is what he needed to do. Fortune not sit there. Lost one fight to Timothy Johnson. Knocked out in the first round, and now he's in trouble. Now he's in danger of becoming submitted for the first time, but defending. He's still, now he's in a much better position than he was with Linton Vassell on top of him. Mm. Vassell trying to slide that left arm underneath, controlling the right wrist of Fortune. 
Right now, you see he's got that hand control. That's what's going to allow him to get his arm up there, trying to lock that choke in. Final 30 seconds of the first round. Tyrell control, knowing that if he's got that one arm, he's not going to be able to get choked. Put it in your armpit. Lynn really working hard, trying to cross hands. Nice cross face across the face and jaw area. He's trying to make Tyrell Fortune move and make the mistake that allows him to lock it up, but it's not going to happen. Strong start by the number six ranked Linton Vassell taking on the fifth ranked Tyrell Fortune. I don't want you on the fence anymore. I love I don't that. Want that. I don't know. Want that. Keep breath. Make sure we take our feet with us and we get our feet tight. Can? Okay? Can't stand in front of them, right? You can't find that. During the early part of the fight, that's the left hand that missed, but the right hand cleanly lands along the jawline of Lynn Vassell, but it was Vassell working for the takedown, getting his arms around the body of Tyrell Fortune, then forcing him by getting the hook here. You see Tyrell trying oh, yeah, to stop it, up, he lifts up, the leg, ends up in the top position, and from that point was able to land a lot of good work, good jobs, nothing that really hurt Fortune badly. Eventually, Fortune was able to get himself at least with his face up a much better All position. Right, second round. We'll see what happens in the second round. Ready to fight. Now, let's go. Back you. Back you. The bell and round two. And Fortune moves forward, launching the lead overhand right. What you want to see from Tyrell Fortune in this round compared to the last one, he needs to put Linton on his back foot. He cannot let Linton start marching him towards his back and putting his back on the cage. Fortune putting pressure on Vassell, attacking him with knees and a flurry of strikes. Ties Blum and the knee right to the face. So Fortune exploding here in round two and securing his first takedown into side control. Now we'll see what Tyrell Fortune can do from this position. He needs to set his hips back. An explosive start to the second round by Fortune. I think Fortune got a little pissed off, but look at what's happening. A reversal of Fortune. Vassell coming out on top. And Vassell again ending up in top position here on Fortune. Fortune getting back to his feet. Nice job by Tyrell Fortune to get back to his feet. A great effort by Lynn Vassell to reverse that position. Oh, and that shot was to the peninsula south of the equator, and Fortune falls in a heap. Come on, man. You need to get up on your feet and uh, let's work it out, okay? Here's a replay of it. Lynn Vassell brings it up. Yeah. It hit just a little bit center and south. Fortune will have up to five minutes it's time to, work it out, okay? to recover. Mike Beltran, the referee, and letting him know he has time to work it out. Right over here, Farrell. Stay over here in your corner over here. Farrell, walk it off back and forth here. You got time. You can work it out. And in these type of situations, if you're Tyrell Fortune, just take the time. Don't worry. Don't rush yourself back Loose into something. Make sure Pick that you up. feel that you are ready to compete. You ready to go? You sure you're okay? Okay. John, bring it in. Let's go. And hey, Fortune okay? indicates he is ready to continue. They touch gloves and three minutes, 47 seconds left in the middle frame. Tyrell Fortune in the red gloves. Linton Vassell in the blue. Important matchup here between two fighters ranked in the middle of the heavyweight top ten. Well, I'll tell you, there's a whole lot of things that happened in the beginning of this round that Tyro 
of fortune landed some clean shots with his hands was going after him and nice knees up suck up into the head but lit the cell when tyrell was able to take him down and oh, was able to reverse it that put a doubt in tyrell fortune's mind the cell from south class dance blocked that right hand kick Low inside kick delivered by Fortune as Vassell attacking the bottle and body again. And Fortune just unloading with that lead right. Tyrell would be much better suited if he was going to throw his hands and then land those kicks off of the hands. Because if the hands of Lynn Vassell have to come up to block what Tyrell is throwing, then the body's going to be open to the kick. Lead left hook by Fortune, midway point of the fight. And round number two, Fortune fainting, calf kick executed by Vassell, goes upstairs with the left kick, blocked by Fortune. Jab by Vassell, doesn't follow up with the right. Just go loose! Get it tight, go put out a lot of energy in the early part of this round. Now they got a break. Well, at least one of them did with the cell. But there's a one to the last for Fortune. Under two minutes left in the second. Tyrell would be well versed to start throwing those straight shots instead of all those movement things. Start throwing straighter shots. <laughs> that right hand misses. And that three. That right hand connected for Cell with the Shots on Lynn right now. Lynn's okay, but he needs to work his way. Oh, he's been cut out of this position. The cell's cut. <laughs> then he's put his hand to the ground. His knees aren't there. He can get himself back to his feet. The cell trying to take Fortune down. Fortune is calling putting its pressure on the cell. Under a minute left in the day. Nice job. Some left hands landing. We talked about the top pressure. The cell. the cell looking for that choke. Under 30 seconds left in the second. Fortune in a perilous position. Lynn Vassell is coming back. Tyrell Fortune was winning this round. I think Lynn Vassell is now taking this round over. High drama at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino as we go to round three. <laughs> Legal blow. Can't stand in front of him. Hey, you can't stand in front of him. You gotta walk a little bit to the right to get his feet to turn. Because when he plants his feet, he's dangerous, Linton. All right? If you wanna touch his hand, that seems to work good for you to find his range. Touch his hand, and when he swings, then you can counter with the jab, all right? Big shots by Tyrell Fortune. This was at the beginning. This is when he started throwing those knees. A lot of flurry there, but it was the reversal of Lynn Vassell that started to change things in this round. Then we had the low blow and the break, but in the end of this round, Lynn Vassell was able to get to the top position here, land elbows, land strikes. He received the cut, but he did the best work in the round. Bell, round three, how do you have it heading into the final round? I've got Lynn Vassell ahead in this fight. I think the Tyrell Fortune needs to finish it if he wants to get away. Both 
Both guys are tired though right now. You can see just the movements. Double pump on the jab by Vassell. Fortune coming forward. Fortune still has fast hands. And there's a fast knee up the middle that bothered Vassell. And now the time plum, a series of knees by Fortune connecting. Exactly how the second round started for Fortune. Bringing it back in the third round. You can hear Tyrell Fortune's corner is yelling for him to disengage. They don't want him in this grappling situation with Linton. And Fortune continues to deliver knees to the body and to the head, creating enough space to deliver those strikes. <laughs> Trevor Lally is losing his mind. You First it was Fortune, and now it's Bassell. And you could hear the, that cut all the way across. It's a replay of that. Yeah, that landed center and south. That was not I'm just gonna, you got shot. Here. You got time, okay? But that's exactly what happened to Tyrone Fortune in the second round. But the one thing Linton Vassell, Linton Vassell is in control of this time, and look, he took a lot of damage in the beginning of this round. He needs to take his time, get himself back. Even if it's not so much the groin shot, it's your time, you're in control of it. You decide when you're ready to come back. Don't rush it. Start working our way up. Let's go, let's do, start working it out. going to happen here more if Linton can't go on because he's hurt you can see he's hurt and this would not be a no contest what they would do is they would have the judges score the portion of the third round that they saw and they would go to the judges scorecards for what we call a technical decision there would be a winner and there would be a loser in this fight Trying to walk it off again has a total of five minutes. Talk to me, how are we doing? You okay? You got time. Let's go, keep working it out. Work it out. Work it out. You got time. Are you okay? You want to continue? Ready to go? Yes? You want to continue? Okay, guys. Both of you guys, come in here. Vassell, hey, let it be known. Listen here, bring it in. Let Both it of you. be hey. known that he wants to continue. We're gonna keep this clean, you understand? Both of you, knock this off. Keep it clean, you understand? Ready, I understand. Let's go, Devin, fight, let's go! The action resumes. And Fortune swimming in with some strikes, clashing with Vassell, and again going to those knees and opening up on Vassell, who's along against the fence, right hand left. Another right that Vassell avoided with head movement. That kick was blocked by Vassell. Oh, and the right hand delivered with bad intentions by Fortune. Absolutely, those hands right now, based upon the rest and everything. Let me be careful to watch the back of the head, but his hands are fast right now. I'm sure. 
that Tyrell should be in this position. He's got his hands clasped. He can get the takedown. He's got to be careful. But those 12 to 6 of <laughs> And the takedown by Fortune exploding. As we near the midway point of the final round, Fortune looking to maximize this position with two and a half minutes left. And he's looking to do it again. Tyrell Fortune just looked at his corner and said, I can't see. I don't know what happened. And there was something when he ended up looking like he was going for the takedown. It seemed to be that he was bothered by something. And here now, again, Vassell reversing Fortune. Yeah, and in the, in the, in the position. Ball with two minutes left. I do not know what occurred that took the vision away from Tyrell Fortune, but he looked at his corner, or at least put his face towards that as he was talking. He said, I cannot see. Vassell looking for his sixth rear naked choke submission. Still plenty of time left in the fight. If Fortune has never been submitted. If the cell can break it down, get those hips pressed in, and get his legs up in the air, he's gonna have a big opportunity in stopping this fight. And Linton Vassell doesn't now has his hooks in. Vassell looking for the RNC fortune, trying to block it, do whatever he can. Nice job of rolling through by Tyrell Fortune. And wow! That's what Lynn Vassell has done this entire fight. And Vassell puts in one hook, wants to flatten out Fortune. Coming up on the final half minute of the fight. Right now, this is more of a turf position in wrestling. You see the legs entwined. He's got heavy hips on Tyrell. That's keeping Tyrell from being able to get himself up. That's actually smart movement by Lynn Vassell. Hard fight. Gutsy battle at heavyweight. How do you have it on your unofficial scorecard after 15 minutes like I of said, grit? I thought that Tyrell Fortune had to finish Lynn Vassell. He wasn't able to do that, and I think that Lynn Vassell is going to be the winner of the fight. Tough. What's your take on what you just witnessed? You know, uh, both guys, I thought, fought their butts off. They were just out there giving it everything they had. But it was the grappling of Lynn Vassell, not the wrestler that was a world game winner, not the wrestler that was an NC2A champion. It was the grappling of Lynn Vassell that ended up actually winning this fight. And he said that he felt it was his submission skills that would give him the advantage on the ground, but it wasn't so much even the submission skills, it was the transitions and the, the scrambling and maybe the size giving him that extra little pep in the step on the ground. He's the lighter fighter. But we talked about, would that, him coming in lighter, would that help him with his cardio? Would it be a difference maker? And the fact that Tyrell was actually bigger. Here comes Linton in the takedown. You saw this was early in the fight, first round. Lifts the leg, takes that position away from him, ends up in the top position and did great work during the first round. And then he just continued to do it every round. The second round, he started off Tyrell Fortune did a great job of blitzing him on the feet, but it was Lynn Vassell getting the back and being able to do damage from the top position. Lynn Vassell's ground and pound, Lynn Vassell's grappling, in my opinion, was the difference maker in this fight, and I believe he should win the fight. Big Swarm looking for one of his biggest victories, hoping to leapfrog Tyrell Fortune.
Let's get the official decision. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, for the decision, we go to your three judges. Your first, Troy Winkapaw, scores the fight. 29-28. He sees it for fortune. Your second judge, Eric Cologne, 29-28. He sees the fight for Vassell. Your third and final judge at cage side, Chris Lee, scores the fight 29-28. He sees it for the winner by split decision. Big Swarm, Linton Vassell. The Big Swarm with the big win, Linton Vassell. The uh, split decision judge. You know what? As long as they got the right guy winning, I'm okay. And Vassell was the right guy tonight. He's now won three straight and four. Tyrell Fortune tasting defeat for just the second time as we go back to Amanda at the fight desk. Moro, thank you so much. Well, we are just minutes away from the main event. But as a reminder, tomorrow, undefeated 24-0 with 21 knockouts. David Benavidez returns to meet Chiron Shut It Down Davis in a super middleweight matchup tomorrow night starting at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on Showtime. Well, it is time to get ready for the main event. Current featherweight champ Chris Cyborg. Can anyone take that title away from her? Well, Arlene Blanco, you see her there on the list. Well, she tried. That didn't work. So tonight it is Sinead Kavanaugh's turn. But another name we see on that list. At number six, Janae Harding, someone who is very familiar with this division. She is here with us at the fight desk. Janae, we're going to talk about Sinead Kavanaugh here in a second because you fought her, you beat her. But first, just overall your thoughts going into this fight tonight. I'm super excited for this main event. Um, we've got two hard, heavy hitters, massive right hands. Sinead being a five-time national Irish boxing champion, she obviously understands what she needs to do to win, and she's up against one of the pound for pound best females in the world. So super excited. I think that since you know so much about it, but <laughs> other than what is Cyborg, what is Cyborg and Sinead, what do they bring to the table though? That when you look at them, you say like, that's, I could probably pick them apart. I think for me, obviously, I'm a little bit longer of a fighter for the both girls. I mean, you can see that uh, they're both a little bit shorter um, than I am. I mean, both of them hit hard. Both of them obviously come forward. Um, I think, I show a little bit more dynamic in my striking. Um, I am able to scrap, I'm able to sit there and bang, but I also kind of want to show off some clean striking, some, some long distance using my range and everything like that. So it's exciting tonight for them to be so sort of similar, but for me, I'm, I'm looking at what I can do and, and how I can kind of nullify both of those things. We've talked so much about both of these fighters coming into this, so let's talk technique, because that is what they're going to need in the next 15 minutes or so here. Um, let's talk about Chris Cyborg here. What is her technique going into this, Josh? It's to fight smart. She just needs to be composed. She needs to put her opponent on the back foot. And if she does that, I think that as long as she stays composed. But the one thing is, she was out there with AJ McKee, training down there in LA. She was making sure that she was working on the wrestling. What does that say to you? I think Body Shop is a great place for her. There's a lot of killers over there. That, that group of boys, they work hard. They, they train hard. They're well known for training hard. And obviously, AJ is super successful in his career. So it'll be exciting to see how much that's changed Cyborg's game and maybe given her a few little aspects that she can show off against Sinead Kavanaugh tonight. When you see Cyborg here, it's all striking. It's a little bit of wrestling here against Arlene Blanco. But when, when you see that she gets a submission, you see where she's making these transitions. What do you think you're going you're to see from her tonight? I think Sinead Kavanaugh and Arlene Blanco are, are kind of similar. They obviously fought in the past. They came to a decision. They had a bit of a scrap as well. It was a bit of a back and forth one. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how Sinead has taken the lessons of Arlene's mistakes and possibly using that in tonight's performance. All right, let's talk about Sinead Kavanaugh here because we know that she is not afraid of Chris Cyborg. She has said that all of her past opponents, they fought her scared, and she does not plan to do that tonight, which is great. But what is her technique, Josh? Her technique, like I've said all night long, is to try to put Cyborg on her back foot. She needs to create angles. She needs to make sure that she doesn't stand directly in front of Cyborg for those blitz shots and able to be pressed to the fence. But if you were to fight like someone like Cyborg, if you're in Sinead Kavanaugh's position, how would you fight her? I think I would utilize a lot of lateral movement. I would, like you're saying, not stand straight in front of her. I really don't want to get hit clean by that right hand, as you've seen by a lot of girls in 
cyborgs pass, they get hit clean with that right hand and then they kind of get put on the back foot for the rest of the fight. Um, it's sort of like a shocking thing. So you don't want to get bullied. You don't want to get bullied by cyborg. You don't want your back to hit the fence. You kind of want to keep moving, keep picking her off as much as you can and then choose your time that you're going to blast her and hopefully nullify that. When you fought Sinead, what was the one thing that surprised you the most? I think possibly the fact that she went for a takedown. There was, uh, in the first round, she went for a takedown. Um, when we were clinching, I was a little bit surprised that she did that. I think she does back her ground game. We just haven't seen a lot of it. You know, we saw a little bit of it against Olga Rubin, but it was still more of a ground and pound kind of vibe. You didn't really see a lot of jiu-jitsu as per se. So it'll be interesting to see if she uses that tonight or you're, gets in that position. I'm not letting you out of here without a prediction. Okay. You didn't think you were getting away with <laughs> that easy, right? Of prediction. Course. I'm going to go with Cyborg. I think Sinead definitely has the opportunity to win, but I think Cyborg is just a very dominant champion, and she'll get it done in two rounds. Sinead, we appreciate you being here. All of your insight into that. We cannot wait to see you back in the cage very soon. Moro, it is time. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We'll send it back to you. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. One of the most formidable forces to don the four-ounce gloves, an all-time great, and Chris Cyborg defends the Bellator featherweight title for the third time against Sinead K.O. Kavanaugh. The motivator of champion, the first thing you can know, think you're the champion. You have to think you're the challenge. If you think you're the champion, you, you stay a little comfortable. You have to be hungry all the time. Bellator featherweight world champion, Chris. I'm feeling great for preparing this fight against Shane. It's going to be the third time defending my world title, and I'm excited to come back to the cage. Chris Cyborg has won many belts in different organizations. You know, of course, I'm a fan, but I have to make more of a fan of me now, like, you know, and uh, that's my goal here. Like, I'm Shane Cabinet, and I'm going to take you. <laughs> My nickname is K.O. because I'm willing to take your head off. <laughs> I'm explosive. I throw bombs. Whoever connects for us is, uh, is going down, I think, you know? I'm very excited for this fight, but I really don't like to talk too much. You know, I like to prove inside the cage. I know sometimes you motivate for people to get excited to the fight, but when people see Cyber gonna fight, everybody gets excited. Fans like action, they like violence, and I bring that. Wow, what a I see holes in Chris Cyborg's game, yeah, I, I see her flaws. I think that's why she didn't want to fight me, and she knows that I'm a whole worst nightmare. She does that for Chris, they've been intimidated and scared. She doesn't scare me whatsoever, like, she actually suits me. I'm bringing power, and I'm bringing everything I can give to this fight. Shanna says she's gonna shock the world. Everyone I fight say that. I believe she is a tough fighter, but I have a lot of tools for finish that fight. This camp will make the difference. I'm starting playing with uh, Antonio McKee. You ready? And the difference we really work uh, strike, work wrestling, work everything. I always like to improve every fight, getting better game in the fight. Nice. In my eyes, what Chris needs to do in this fight to win is just make weight. I think the weight cut is the hardest part. As far as her skill set, I think she's the most dominant fighter in the world, and I don't think that there's anybody that can contest that. Looking on into the future of this fight, all I see is pain and the fight ending in the first round. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm going to grab this. Like I'm, I'm in there to fight. I'm in there to the death. She has been living the high life for 20 years, like, you know? And I've fucking nothing. I'm coming, I'm coming for Chris, and I'm coming for that belt, and I'm coming for everything that she has, yeah. I feel great, you know? I feel excited every fight. Now Bellator have the top 10 in my division, so I did three fights, so I have seven fights left, and I'm very excited about it.
the cage and that is a good statement and she has she has run through just about every opponent that has stepped in the cage with her she is special she's special on the outside she is definitely special on the inside for chris cyborg in this fight she needs to force shenade into the cage that is a great place for her and just work for your takedown from there if you get the takedown you're winning the fight show your fight iq don't think that you have to get into the gunslinging battle with her. If you do that, you're leading down the path to her possibly getting a win. She dethroned inaugural featherweight champion Julia Budd in her promotional debut. Earned her first submission win against Arlene Blenko in her first title defense. Defeated Leslie Smith in the latest stoppage in Bellator history in her second title defense. And now faces the upset-minded Sinead Kavanaugh here in our main event. You can look at the main statistics here. Close to the same heights, close to the same weight, and the reach only an inch difference. It is who is going to put this fight in the range that makes them the winner. We'll find now. Here's Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA live on Showtime from Hard Rock Live at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Featherweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Florida Athletic Commission Executive Director Patrick Cunningham at Caveside, Assistant Executive Director Tim Shipman. And now, first introducing the Blue Corner, 
at five foot seven, weighing in 145 pounds, even with the capacity to become Bellator's first Irish world champion. She enters with the professional record of seven and four, hailing from Dublin, Ireland, the challenger, Sinead Cahill. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner. At five foot eight, weighing in 145 pounds, one of MMA's all-time greatest tonight, making her third title defense. She stands with 24 professional victories, just two defeats from Curitiba para Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the defending Bellator featherweight world champion, The referee in charge, Jason Herzog. First, just going over the rules in the back. There were no final questions from you, Blue. There were no final questions from you, Red. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. I'm not ready to fight. Main event is upon us for the Bellator Featherweight Championship. Chris Cyborg, 13 and 1 in championship fights during her illustrious career. She's in the red gloves. Sinead Kavanaugh with a chance to shock the world, coming off a 405 day layoff, the longest of her more than six year career. The bell, round number one. Immediately, Cyborg stalking Kavanaugh, rattling her with a shot. what she does look, look, exactly what you saw Chris do she blitzes in forces her opponent to the cage she'll land some good knees here work on her and then kind of break away and then you're gonna see her make that blitz again she does she likes doing that in the first round to break her opponent down cyborg has recorded 10 wins via first round knockout knee to the midsection another knee to separation and the left and right cyborg opening up on Kavanaugh Kavanaugh trying to fight her back Kavanaugh not being able to get the range based upon her back being against the cage. Kavanaugh's coach, no relation to her. John Kavanaugh saying in MMA, it's all about becoming comfortable in uncomfortable situations. It doesn't get much more uncomfortable than being in there with one of the greatest in Chris Cyborg. Now look right there what you see. Kavanaugh moving, using lateral movement. Don't allow Chris to throw that blitz. Get you against the cage. Oh, oh. And it's right hand. Fist. Chris Cyborg makes the statement in round one. Mamma mia! Chris Cyborg starches Sinead Kavanaugh for her 11th first round knockout. Kavanaugh said she was going to shock the world. gets touched on the chin like that, you're gonna end up going down and going out. Let's take a look at what happened here, Moral. It was explosive when she decided to go. She goes, she throws a shot, ends up with her back on the cage, and then bounces off of the cage, lands that right hand. Sinead's still throwing, but that right hand lands again. Puts her down. You see her go out there. You saw her go limp. She was definitely out. The hammer fist put her in that position. Right hand. Watch the watch the right hand again. Boom. Right on the chin. Kavanaugh goes down. She tries to sit up. She's out. And then gets woken up by the next shot. Watch again. It's two right hands. That right hand kind of puts her back. She's throwing. But that right hand puts her on the deck. And the hammer fist puts an end to it. Chris 
Cyborg improving to 4-0 in the Bellator MMA cage with her third knockout. All four fights have ended inside the distance. She improves to 25-2 with one no contest. And she records her 20th win via form of knockout. Chris Cyborg remains Bellator featherweight champion. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the end comes one minute, 32 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout and still Bellator featherweight world champion, Chris Cyborg. And the belt will remain around one of the best to ever step foot into a mixed martial arts cage. And the champ is standing by with Big John McCarthy. I'm here with the winner and still featherweight champion of the world, Chris Cyborg. Chris, that was explosive. You had two moments in there where you were blitzing her, going after her. You bounced off the cage, you landed a right hand and then another right hand that put her down. Talk to me about that fight and the intensity of it. You know, first I want to say good night for everyone coming here to watch fights. Guys, I love you guys. I do this for you guys. Second, um, thank you, uh, John McCart, to be here. And thank you for Scott for being here. You know, I trained really hard for this fight. I'm sorry, my team, I don't did anything we planned. So, you know, we never know. We go train, you have a feeling about the fight. And but I didn't play this, but man, I feel great. And I'm really happy to win. You brought in a coach in Antonio McKee, and I know you brought him in for the wrestling aspect. Were you thinking of coming in here and taking her down and wrestling? You know, I knew, I knew she was more strike, so I had the opportunity to go take now and uh, go do the ground game. But, you know, I said, man, I want to feel how's it going to be the stand-up. And, man, the right hand get it faster with uh, uh, McKee. He knows that, and I'm very excited to knock out. You have just been on a wrecking crew, running through all of the opponents they're putting in front of you. You took the title from Julia Budd in a fantastic performance. You got through Arlene Enko, Leslie... Smith and now Sinead, who is it that you believe actually deserves to be in this cage with you next? You know, I ask for Kat Zingano, the next, you know, but I lift the hands of Scott Coker. I don't choose any opponent. Anyone ready here, here close to me, can want to fight to me, man, I'm ready. There happens to be another fighter out in the crowd who is a free agent in Kayla Harrison. She is a two-time gold medalist in judo. She is a two-time world champion in another organization. What do you think about possibly taking on her? Kayla, thanks for coming to the fights. You know, I really appreciate you here. I mean, I'm here. If you want to fight me one day, you're going to be a great fight. But Ali have to talk to all the promotion for we make this happen. Well, sounds good to me. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet and give it up for the champion of the world, Chris Cyborg. On this Friday night, Chris Cyborg's right was might and what about the potential? Chris Cyborg, Kayla Harrison, she also mentioned Kat Zingano. Tonight, Cyborg gets it done in the first round for the 11th time in her illustrious career. Let's go back to the fight desk here once again is Amanda Geva. Moro, thanks so much, Josh. The very first thing I said to you when the show began was Chris Cyborg has the ability to break people. Granted, I stole that from you, but that's exactly what we saw tonight. I'm glad I could spread the knowledge to you. That's there what you we're go. There, for. You make me sound smart. It wasn't even so much as she broke her. She really just got down in a, in a slugfest, and that's what it came down to. Sinead, was, that was really her only result was to try and get Cyborg to throw back, stand in front of her so she could land. 
and it backfired. The speed of Cyborg was evident right off the bat, and the power was definitely evident. They both took shots in that exchange, if you watch, but it was Cyborg's right hook that landed the fight, that ended the fight, that landed. It was impressive, and then she followed up with two big shots that were super unnecessary. So it was just one of those, one of those fights and those exchanges. Wrestling, AJ McKee, wrestling, what? What are you talking about? She came out, she tried the takedown, she realized out of the exchange, you know what? I can finish this on the feet, and she let it be known. I'm just, I want to point this out to everyone. Big John brought it up. Kayla Harrison is another organization. She's a free agent. She's in the crowd tonight. That was a big stamp of saying, you know what? If you're going to come to Bellator, you should expect to be treated like this by me. I'm just letting people understand. Kayla Harrison is a very talented fighter, but she's dealing with an animal. This person, Cyborg, is at, a, is at not, I wouldn't say another level, just at a different level in terms of their styles. Th that would be a great fight. But Captain Gano cannot be forgotten about because she's also someone that's right there pecking at the belt. Well, we saw what Chris Cyborg can do tonight. We've seen it again and again, and sure enough, she is still the champ. Well, Bellator Nation, if you miss any portion of tonight's fight card, Showtime has you covered. Check out your listings for encore plays of Bellator MMA on Showtime and Showtime Experience. Stream. And Bellator returns Friday, December 3rd. It is a battle for Bellator gold. Bantamweight title is Sergio Pettis taunts his belt against the former champ, Kyoji Horiguchi. That is 10 9 Central, only on Showtime. Up next, Michael C. Hall has returned 10 years later as your favorite serial killer. An encore episode of Dexter New Blood is next. It has been a great night here in South Florida, but that does it for us at the Fight Desk. Moro, take us home. Great job, Amanda. Thank you very much. And yes, a night here where, well, Bellator MMA first began. Bellator won April 3rd, 2009, right here at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. And tonight, the four-fight main card began with Anger Fist, Arlene Blanco putting her fist on Pam Sorensen's face en route to a dominant unanimous decision victory. The number one contender in the featherweight division. And then Aaron Pico forced to go the distance for the first time in his blossoming mean career. His fifth straight win, a dominant unanimous decision over the previously unbeaten Justin Gonzalez, Linton Vassell. He took the split decision over Tyrell Fortune in a battle of top 10 ranked heavyweights. And then in the main event, the only fighter to win championships in Bellator, UFC Strike Force and Invict FC, Chris Cyborg defends the Bellator title for the third time. Good night.